Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is a morning market prep video for May 19th, 2022. Well, my goodness, yesterday was one of those really ugly days that come in the market every now and then. As the world seemed to be shocked that the consumer was not as strong as the talking heads continued to tell us that they were. Disappointing retail earnings really shook the market and um, brought that realization that a recession may be on the way, triggering a massive day of selling. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in, let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Thursday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here today. Obviously, yesterday was pretty rough, and if you were one of the traders that um, kind of bought this bottom, hoping that the rally was going to continue to the upside, you had a pretty painful day yesterday, unless you flipped over to short the market. Luckily, um, those of us on right way options were prepared um, actually for this, and it turned out to be a very a profitable day for us, but I certainly understand the pain that a lot of folks have been under here in the market, and unfortunately, it really could continue for a while. Let's take a look at these charts and see if we could gain some information about how we may want to approach the market for today. First off, as you can see, we have followed that downtrend as I was suggesting um, yesterday. Watch that downtrend and watch these price resistance levels in the chart as we test those. That's where the bears could be lined up and ready to defend and boy did they come in and defend yesterday. Pushing down sharply on those retail earnings misses and this morning it looks like we're going to gap lower and compare complete this um, lower high and lower low pattern in the market. So we'll want to watch that closely. Now we've been trying to bounce off of uh, the pre-market low here, as you can see, trying to lift back up. But we do have some data coming our way and it'll be interesting to see how the market reacts and what that data might show us. Um, here before the bell. So let's watch that closely. If those bears continue to push down, well, we know we've already um, in, in this move, we may be breaking that low here this morning. And we have to start looking for those next levels of price support in the chart. Unfortunately, as we look out here, we do have some price support right in this area that we may try to bounce off of. But if that doesn't hold, well, we could sink quite a little bit lower here. So keep a close eye on that. Now, if those bulls do step in and find reason to push us up, once again, we're going to have to watch some of this area right in here, pushing right back into these little resistance areas because we're a long ways away from those major resistance areas um, in the chart. If we take a look at the technicals of the chart, obviously pretty darn dismal, breaking back down below our 500 day moving average, our shorter term moving averages crossing down, creating a substantial price and technical resistance right here in the chart. And that really kind of goes, uh, rings true for the other indexes as well. So pretty rough day um, yesterday and looks like we could extend that maybe a little bit this morning. Let's take a look at our SPY. Now the SPY pushing down, not quite, not quite in the pre-market, um, taking um, in a new low, and we're trying to bounce up off of that. So we may be trying to hold a little double bottom, fingers crossed here, that um, we could see a little bit of a bounce back um, on that um, horrible selling. But again, we've got some data coming our way that could could have an effect on that. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Watch these pretty carefully, these levels pretty carefully. And yesterday I mentioned 
this area right here that we'd want to watch for a price support because we have one, two, three, four, five candles all lining up um, in that area. And you could almost add in that bottom candle as well. We came close to touching up in there. So as you can see, if we were to rally back, it would be a substantial rally back. And that would be a nice little relief if we popped back up into this area but remember that's just pushing us back into the downtrend so keep an eye on that and of course if those bears um, continue to engage and so then we're really going to have to start looking out quite a bit further out here in the chart for those next levels of price support that could come into play so watch that carefully now if you've been following um, um, the I put this on um, an XPS chart but if you've been following at all the um, analyst comments a um, couple of days ago Bank of America came out and put an S&P 500 target at 3,000 now and Morgan Stanley just a day ago came out and said uh, their target is somewhere down around 3,400 so please keep in mind this may not be over as a matter of fact it could be a very very difficult summer as we continue to deal with um, all of um, all of the pressures and the, the compounding effect that can occur in a market like this. Let's take a look at the QQQ. Now the NASDAQ continued to sell off and you can see here in the pre-market we're pushing down but we haven't made new lows. Um, uh, we're bouncing off of them I should say with that possible double bottom so very similar situation here. And again, we've got that little bit of accumulation of price action right in there that could serve as resistance if we do bounce back up. And of course, if we sell, if we find more reason to move on lower, look for some support levels down here in this area around 266. Now, keeping in mind our technicals here on this chart are really bad. Um, we have our 50 day moving average closing in on that 200 or on the 500 day moving average for a crossover. And we have created just a tremendous level of technical and price resistance right through here and an even stronger level right through here so we've got a lot of work to come back and um, it will likely take some time for us to work back through some of those levels if we find reason for bullishness and then if we take a look at our Russell IWM pretty bearish here as well but interestingly enough was the strongest of the indexes yesterday refused to completely break down like the other indexes now I will say one of the reasons that might be the case is, is the Russell is one of the most oversold indexes out there um, currently and we held right in there on that little accumulation of price action right in there. So um, IWM maybe has the best chance of bouncing back, um, uh, back up but please keep in mind if those bears um, engage we could easily slip down into here creating new lows in the Russell. So pretty ugly chart overall. Let's take a look at the VIX. One thing that was kind of interesting yesterday is the VIX struggled to get going. As a matter of fact, it was interesting as we were selling yesterday that their, the volume stayed relatively low. There didn't seem to be, a with such a big sell-off, a massive spike in fear or panic. Now, with the gap down this morning, we could certainly see that coming into play. And as I've suggested before, I don't think this gets really bad unless we see that fear spike over here. Because if fear starts spiking up here, that's going to force um, um, institutions to make some different choices here in the market. So watch, watch that carefully. Unfortunately, we did hold in here above that 26 handle, 25 handle, um, that support area. And with the gap down this morning we're looking at, we could easily be spiking up into here. So watch that closely. And then if we take a look at our uh, T2122, our, whoops, T2122 um, gives us maybe the best hope of a bounce. If we take a look at this on the daily, we were all the way up here um, 
and in one one fell swoop came all the way back down now please keep in mind we have been able to linger down here if uh, data continues to come out and kind of compound our problem we certainly can stay down here as a matter of fact we could we, we've got a little bit more room to dip to the downside and if I make this a weekly you can see we still have a little bit of room that we could push down to the downside if those bears decide to keep on pushing. Now, um, that also opens up that big opportunity. If we find some reason for bullishness, we've created a big opportunity for an upside rally. Whether or not we can get a whole lot of momentum in the rally after the beating that um, the bulls have been taking here, but we'll wanna watch carefully for that possibility to occur, a little bit of relief after um, um, you know maybe a couple of days of pretty rough selling and then let's take a look at um, our T2108 now interesting here in T2108 even though we were really breaking down and going lower I want you to notice that our T2108 didn't set a new low so we we did reject this resistance in the chart and we do continue in these really ugly downtrends um, but we may be so bearish at the moment that that could suggest that we could catch that little bit of relief back to the upside. Only 15, 16% of our stocks holding above the 40 day moving average. That does not make for a bullish market, but it does say we're so oversold we could bounce at any time. And then our T2107, uh, very similar situation. We rejected this resistance level, pushing back down, but the good news is we didn't make a new low yet, so we'll want to keep an eye on that. Downtrends are still obviously in place, and remember this is nowhere near bullish with 22 and a quarter percent of stocks, you know, holding above their 200 day moving average. Not a good situation but also such an extremely bearish situation that maybe we could have that hope of a relief rally on the way soon. Let's take a look at our T2101. And this is what I was talking about um, with that volume being light. T2101 didn't respond as you would think it would. Um, um, on such a strong selling day, we would think that that would spike up, but not the case. Um, so little bit of concern um, in here that well maybe some of the selling um, might be a little bit of um, of uh, uncertainty out there because we're not seeing that fear spike and um, which means that we could lean into a little bit of a relief rally here soon so kind of keep an eye on that now if we take a look at our our uh, volume here, notice even after the dark pool activity was accumulated to the market yesterday, um, there's the daily, we didn't really have a major volume spike. And if we look across the indexes, um, a little bit more there in the SPY and the QQQ, but it wasn't just a massive amount of volume um, in that selling. So uh, fingers crossed and hopefulness, if you are bullish for the market, then there may be that opportunity for a little bit of relief uh, coming um, in the near future. Um, let's take a look at some stocks, um, excuse me, our economic calendar. Our economic calendar uh, today, we've got a few hits that could continue to come. Uh, first off, we have jobless claims, and we continue to see um, analysts um, posting um, that they're expecting this to improve. And over the last couple of weeks, that has not been the case. We've actually seen jobless claims starting to creep up. And I've suggested in the past that by this summer, we could see some layoffs beginning to happen as um, uh, obviously consumers are changing habits. Um, um, all of those, all of those companies are going to have to start making some decisions because of the higher costs and the lowering sales. And so we'll want to watch that carefully. If this number were to come in um, with an increase in uh, jobless claims, 
that could really compound the situation uh, today or that bearish sentiment. So watch that carefully. If it comes in as expected, we could be in good shape and get that relief rally. Now, um, also we have the Philly Fed. Now, Philly Fed could also be one of those numbers that could move us around. If you remember on Monday, we had the Empire State Manufacturing. And not only did it miss, it missed badly, um, coming in at a negative uh, 11.9. So take a look over here if that Philly Fed and, and um, again the consensus estimates on these have been very very positive and we've been missing them pretty pretty easily we'll want to watch that one closely as well both of those come out before the bell so it's possible that they just kind of compound that bearish look that we're starting to see here in the market and if you take a look at um, 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 existing home sales obviously we had a very sharp um, decline in um, housing starts in permits well I shouldn't say that it was kind of a mix kind of a mix in there but um, we're certainly seeing that decline and our mortgage applications suggesting a sharp decline in um, mortgage origination and um, applications for refinance that could um, also be that next hit that um, our housing is starting to slow down dramatically so um, we'll want to keep an eye on that. Pay attention to the fact we got a couple of Fed speakers here today. We've got the Fed after the bell uh, today with our balance sheet. Um, remember, we haven't even started rolling off that balance sheet yet. That's going to be in the 1st of June where they actually start to tighten monetary supply. And then we've got um, a few bond auctions that we might want to keep an eye on and 10 year tips that you might want to keep an eye on. So um, as you plan forward, look here, looking into Friday, we have a very light day on Friday of earnings and economic data. So maybe we could start um, taking a breath um, at that point in time. Let's take a look at our earnings calendar to, for today. Our earnings calendar um, would continue to diminish in earnings. Um, and, but we do have um, a number of notables. We're under 30 companies on the calendar today. But the notables that we'll want to be paying attention to, uh, first off, KSS. Uh, KSS um, gapping lower this morning, but you can see putting in quite a, quite a volatile pre-market candle here bouncing around but unfortunately it's already broken through some some substantial support levels and we can see that that route that's beginning to occur in um in retail um, um could also trickle over into this as well so watch that we're going to hear from uh bj um today um Obviously, it got hit really hard yesterday, and we saw a lot of the consumer defensive stocks just get hammered yesterday. Um, just all of a sudden, selling came in there really, really strong, um, getting a little bit of a bounce on their earnings report here this morning. We're going to hear from uh, Flower Foods um, uh, today. Flower Foods also getting just pounded down yesterday on that earnings report. Uh, later on today, we're going to hear from um, um, uh, Applied Material. That will be our um, our uh, notable tech, I guess I should say, um, reporting today. Um, keeping in mind that the Cisco report yesterday sure didn't help us out last night um, going substantially lower. So watch that carefully. And last but not least, um, Ross Stores uh, reporting looks like they're trying to bounce just a little bit higher here this morning. So keep a close eye on that. Um, if you want to catch the full list of notables, make sure you click the link just below the title of the video. That'll take you back to the blog where you can get that full list. Let's take a look at maybe some stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that guys if you could do me that quick favor if this is the first time you've seen these videos if you could please click that subscribe subscribe button on youtube also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time i post a video and if you feel these videos are worthy um, and um, um, helpful to your trading day if you could please click those thumbs up buttons leave those brief comments and i just want to say thank you so much to everyone who does take the time to do that um, let's take a look at um, some of these stocks um, but please guys keep in mind that these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security as a matter of fact um, uh, um, 
we've, we're in such a dangerous market. If you've been losing quite a little bit, I want to recommend that maybe you just back away and protect your capital here a little bit instead of continuing to lose in a market that is this volatile and this challenging to trade. Now, having said that, let's take a look at a few things that might be helpful to you. If you take a look at stock like um, RWM, now, RWM is an inverse ETF on the uh, Russell or the IWM. And as you can see in here, it is moving in an upside trend. And I've mentioned these before. If you're not comfortable shorting, there's an opportunity right in here on some of these inverse ETFs. So um, if you take a look at um, DOG, DOG is on the Dow, an inverse ETF. You can see very, very bullish here possibly breaking out to new highs today. Now, I wouldn't want to chase a move like this, but any rest or pullback would set up that next opportunity in, in those trades. You can look at um, like QID for the NASDAQ, and there's quite a few of these inverse ETFs, and they've been holding up in these very bullish patterns. So if you're uncomfortable shorting the market, um, then um, these might be something for you to look at. Another one that I'm going to point out is just another sector that I've been talking about potential shorting would be, um, um, now this is a triple ETF, so you got to be kind of careful with these highly leveraged ETFs. They're more of a trader than something you buy and hold. But keep an eye on this on FAZ. Um, we're seeing those financials continue to struggle. Um, and um, that may be another place where you can pick up some upside opportunity um, and take advantage of the short side of the market. Let's take a look at some of those financials. I've, I've been kind of mentioning um, these as potential short. And as you can see, BAC, I talked about um, uh, this being a short the last couple of days and um, running into that downtrend, pushing on down to the low. Citibank doing very much the same thing. Now, one that's been um, a little bit stronger because, um, was Goldman Sachs, but it has also succumbed to the pressure here in the market. And I just can't envision, as we continue to raise rates um, and seeing the destruction that's happening in that, that housing market right now, that we're going to see these financials really rebound back strongly. So be very, very careful here on some of these stocks. I think they have more downside potential in them as um, the, all of this weight of this data continues to pile on. Um, if you're looking for some long trades, take a look at stocks that are holding in these nice upside trends like Merck. Merck's been holding up very, very well, although yesterday it did get caught up in the selling, pulling back. Um, let's watch this in here and see if that holds for that next opportunity to the upside. BMY would be another one to keep an eye on. Now, it had tried to break through resistance here and popped out, but that is pushing back. We've got a little tiny uptrend in here. If it can hold in this area, it may still have that opportunity to push on through to the upside. I have been talking about all these defensive sector stocks lately, but my goodness, did they get hammered yesterday. So these are off the list for a while. Things like Coke, they just, I mean, pounded down yesterday as we're seeing the consumer being strained and they're probably going to start making some different choices and that possibility of recession. And I don't know if you guys saw the report from Goldman Sachs this morning, but Goldman Sachs is now suggesting by this summer, we could have an actual average gas price of over $6 a gallon. And our uh, every day this week, we have increased a, a new record in those gas prices. So you have to imagine that the consumers are considerably strained um, out here and habits will continue to change as those prices continue to rise. So watch those things closely. Um, you, you, we're still going to need food. We're still going to need those, those basic necessities. So watch those kind of stocks because they can sell off pretty strongly and then turn around and start bouncing back up. So watch them carefully. So with that, guys, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I want to wish you great results in your trading. Um, hopefully you're short this market and picking up. It's been a, a tremendous year for us on right way options, shorting um, this market. And um, I hope that you're getting the same kind of experience um, in it. If you're not, be a little bit careful. 
um, you know, stand aside until you have more of an edge in the market. Don't lose that capital to a market that can move so dramatically. So I wish you all of the best. Have an awesome, awesome day. And we'll see you right back here bright and early Friday morning. Have a good one.